Hello everyone, I'm Masato Kashiyashaki from LICT Japan. So today I would like to give a talk on our high frequency beta gamma set field effect transistors for application to harsh environment electronics. This shows outline of my talk today. As an introduction, first I'd like to introduce briefly and the material properties and the features of beta game outside. And then I'll move on to the uh, main topic, uh, highly scalar game outside MOSFETs, uh, device structure, DC, RF device characteristics, and also the delay time analysis. And then I conclude my talk towards the end. So introduction. So you may know them very well, but uh, first uh, I'd like to introduce uh, basic material properties of gamma oxide. So gamma oxide has several types of polymorphos from alpha to copper. So among them, uh, beta is the most stable phase uh, corresponding to monoclinic beta carrier structure as shown here. So all the other polymorphos are metastable phases. So game outside has uh, two strong points and uh, two drawbacks. First of all, uh, game outside has an extremely large band of energy. So in case of the beta, it's about 4.5 BB. And uh, um, most popular and uh, uh, metastable phase, uh, game, uh, alpha game outside, it has a band of energy of uh, 5.3 electron volt. And also, the, uh, we can control the electron density and also the n-type conductivity by using the normal donor doping technology. So in our case, uh, we've already succeeded in controlling electron density uh, in a wide range from 10 to the 15 to the 10 to the 19 uh, by using silicon or tin as a donor dopant. And uh, also, the, as I mentioned, and, uh, uh, there are two and uh, severe drawbacks. First, uh, there, just, there has been no report on p-type doping and also the effective core conductivity. So we have a deep, don a deep acceptor. Therefore, the, uh, we can make the PN junction to have a large barrier, but uh, it's impossible to have the effective hole conduction. Uh, so this is uh, basically due to the uh, basic material properties of game outside and also the general outside materials. And also the game outside has a poor sound conductivity. It's also the typical and the material property for uh, outside semiconductors. So uh, the thermal conductivity of game outside is uh, less than one tenth of those of silicon carbide and gallium nitride. Of course, and uh, this is a very severe issue uh, for the heat dissipation of the game outside power devices. What I'm showing here is comparisons of material properties between major semiconductors and beta gallium oxide. So as I talked, uh, beta gallium oxide has a large band of energy of 4.5 AB. And uh, if you see the direct constant, it's a 10 to 12. So this is almost the same as those of other semiconductors. And uh, breakdown electric field, so this is one of the most appealing points uh, for gallium oxide. So it's a risk and over 7 megavolt per centimeter. So this value is larger than those of silicon carbide, gallium nitride. <laughs> and uh, room temperature electron mobility, uh, it's uh, expected to be around uh, 200. So this is due to the relatively small energy branch of optical funnel. And of course, and optical funnel scattering dominates uh, room temperature electron mobility, even in case of the gallium oxide. And the saturation electron velocity, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's almost the same as those of silicon and the gallium arsenide, and slightly smaller than those of silicon carbide and gallium nitride. And the thermal conductivity, so as you see, it's terrible. It's a, a, a risk and then the, uh, less than one tenth of those of silicon carbide, gallium nitride. And uh, if we calculate the barrier free limit, and as you know, so this is most popular figure of merit to see how sweet of the material is for power device applications. It's very good. Uh, it's larger than those of silicon carbide, gallium nitride. But uh, today I'm going to talk about the uh, high frequency gamma oxide transistors. Therefore, the uh, Johnson's figure of merit is much more important. So if we calculate the Johnson's FOM, uh, as you see, 
it's almost the same as that of game nitro. But in case of the uh, high frequency applications, heat dissipation is uh, um, much more important than the power devices. Therefore, that this and the low thermal conductivity affects the severe degradation of the device performance in case of the game oxide FETs. Therefore, the, uh, I think and the game oxide and the, uh, high frequency FETs doesn't have uh, the uh, benefit uh, expected from the uh, Johnson's figure of merit. So there is another and important feature for game oxide. I mean, uh, better game oxide wafers can be produced from bulk single crystals synthesized by metal growth methods. So uh, we can use any type of the metal growth methods, such as a Chokrosky, floating zone, bridge man, and EFG. So here, and I'd like to introduce the technique of EFG. So it's very simple. Uh, we put the uh, gallium oxide powder source into the crucible and heat it and melt it. And then if we put the uh, dye with a narrow slit as shown here, and then the molten gallium oxide comes out of the uh, slit and due to the capillary effect. And if we put the slit crystal and pull it, we can get a pressure bulk crystals. So there are these kind of the merits for the EFG. And uh, uh, nominal crystal technology, uh, this is the main vendor of the uh, game oxide we have right now. Uh, they, uh, they have already demonstrated the production of the 6 inch diameter game oxide wafer. And also, the, if we see the crystal quality of the uh, bulk wafers, it's already good. A recent enough good for the uh, development of the vertical and the lateral FETs and shorty barrier diodes. From the viewpoint of its extremely large bunch of energy, game oxide is of course promising for high power and high voltage applications. But the large bunch of energy can offer the other possibilities. One of them is a harsh environment electronics. So harsh environment uh, includes this kind of the applications and the atmosphere, space, underground resource survey, nuclear plant. Basically, the environment, uh, silicon and the other uh, existing compound semiconductor devices cannot be operated for a long time. So the, this large bunch of energy can offer the long-term stability of game oxide devices, even at high temperature and uh, under the strong radiation. Therefore, the, uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize and also the, uh, propose that so game oxide FET should be useful not only for the uh, power switching applications, but also the harsh environment electronics. So based, uh, based on this kind of idea, uh, we started the development of uh, game oxide RF transistors. So here, and I'd like to introduce the fabrication and the device characteristics of our first generation uh, high frequency game oxide transistors. Let me move on to the main topic of this talk, uh, highly scalar game oxide MOSFETs. So we used a plasma-assisted MB machine uh, for the preparation of the epitaxial wafers. So these are the gross conditions. Uh, epitaxial structure was very simple. Uh, on top of iron dove semi insulating game oxide 010 substrate, uh, we grew a UID game oxide layer with a thickness of 200 nanometer. That's it. And then the, uh, we process the uh, FETs uh, using the epitaxial wafers. So this is a schematic cross-section of the device structure we fabricated by using the MB-grown epi wafers. So, uh, so into the uh, UID game oil cell layer, uh, we performed a two-time silicon impression doping to make channel and also the ohmic contact regions. And uh, after the two-time iron plantation, we performed the activation annealing at the 925 degrees C. And then that we made the uh, source and drain and electrode by using the titanium-based metal stack. And then the, uh, we deposited in the 29 mm thick aluminum oxide layer by using ALD. Finally, and uh, we fabricated the T-gates uh, with gear lengths of uh, 50 to 1,000 nanometers. So except for the T-gates, uh, the, this device structure was fabricated by using our typical and uh, process conditions. 
So this shows the typical DC IDVD characteristics of the jelly motion MOSFETs we fabricated. So this device had a jet length of 200 nanometers. So as you see, uh, we got a beautiful IDVD curves. So drain current was perfectly controlled by the VG by sink, and also we got a, a good pinch of characteristics too. And the uh, uh, maximum drain current density was 300 mm at the bi jet bias of plus 4 volt. This shows transfer characteristics of the same MOSFETs with a jet length of 200 nanometers. So this measurement was done at the drain bias of 10 volt. So as you see, uh, we got a peak GM of 70 mSm per millimeter. So this is reasonably good for the device structure. And also that we got a, a, a good controllability of the drain current by the jet bias sink as shown here. What I'm showing here is small signal characteristics of the same device with a gel length of 200 nanometers. So this measurement was done at a VG of 10 volt and a VG of minus 20 volt. So as you see, uh, FT was estimated by the extrapolation of current gain, and uh, it was estimated to be 9 gigahertz. On the other hand, uh, Fmax. Fmax was determined by the frequency that both uh, MAG and UG become 0 dB, and uh, it was uh, 27 gigahertz. So I'd like to mention that this Fmax value is the record uh, for the game outside FETs. These are gain length dependencies of FT and Fmax. As you see, uh, FT monotonically increases with decreasing gain length down to 150 nanometers and saturates at about uh, 10 GHz for the further reduction of the gain length. On the other hand, in case of the Fmax, Fmax also increases with decreasing gear length and peaks at about 200 nanometers and starts to decrease for the further reduction of the gear length. So these two features, are saturation and also the reduction, these two features are definitely due to the significant short channel effect. Next, we performed a simple delay time analysis based on the jet length dependence of FT. So total delay time it can be derived from the inverse of the FT, and the total delay time is composed of three parameters, intrinsic delay and drain delay and channel charging delay. And this intrinsic charge delay corresponds to the delay in carrier transport across the region under a gate, and the drain and the channel charging delays uh, both of them are, uh, can be considered as a constant irrespective of gate ranks. What I'm showing here is the gate ranks dependence of total delay time. So as you see, uh, total delay time decreases monotonically with decreasing gate ranks down to 200 nanometers and saturates at uh, 16 to 18 picoseconds. So this saturation is definitely due to the short channel effect. And also that we extract the effective electron density from this slope under the presumption that the tau drain and tau charge are constant irrespective of gate length. So from the slope, uh, we can derive the effective electron velocity and it's estimated to be about 2 times 10 to the 6. So conclusion. In conclusion, uh, we fabricated some micron gel and MOSFETs for high frequency applications. The fabricated MOSFETs demonstrated decent DC characteristics and excellent RS small signal characteristics, especially the FMAX was a new record for gel and FETs. However, uh, we also confirmed significant uh, short channel effect for the gate ranks of less than 200 nanometers we need to solve the issue to further increase FT and Fmax. We also performed a simple delay time analysis to extract the uh, effective electron velocity, and it was estimated to be about a 2 times 10 to the 6 cm per sec. So this value is reasonable for the theoretically predicted saturation electron velocity of 1 to 1.5 times 10 to the 7 cm per sec. So combined with expected high tolerance against high temperature and radiation stresses, we can consider that 
getting much side MOSFETs are promising for harsh environment electronics applications. Thank you very much for your kind attention.